Welcome to our lecture online. There are not a lot of examples to be found on how to actually calculate the action. So I decided to throw in a, a few more examples here being one of them. And so what we're going to do here is calculate the action for an object. Instead of just dropping it from a height of 4.9 meters, we're going to throw it down with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second. Of course, then it reaches the ground a lot faster, so we'll have to find time in the air here as well. But anyway, we're going to again calculate the action of this particular case. Now notice that we already start with some initial kinetic energy and then the kinetic energy increases as it goes down and picks up speed. The potential energy will be the same as before, but you can see now that the average kinetic energy appears to be bigger than the average potential energy. And in this case, we expect the action to be a positive quantity. Nevertheless, for the pad going straight down, that is going to be the path of least action. And so you can see that the path of least, least action can be a negative value, like we saw in the previous videos, or it can be a positive value. It doesn't matter. It just matters that it's the path of least action, so that number will be the smallest possible. And any other path taken will give us a larger action equation or a larger action as we equate what that value is. Again, we need to find the kinetic energy and the potential energy is the function of time. Of course, originally they're a function of velocity and height, so we have to convert. So let's do the conversion. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we have the velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. So in this case, g times t. Notice we're going to take g to be a positive quantity. And on the downward velocity, the magnitude of velocity increases. We don't care about the sign because we're going to square it anyway. So if we square this value, you get v squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2g v initial t plus g squared t squared. That is equal to v squared for the kinetic energy going down. So plugging that in here, we get 1 half times the mass times the quantity v initial squared plus 2g v initial times t and plus g squared t squared and that will be the kinetic energy while it's on its way down as a function of time. Now we need to find the height as a function of time so here we have to say that y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. Now in this case, since we're moving downward, the height is going to decrease. So we need to make that a negative and the velocity is in the negative direction. So we also need to make this a negative because we start from an initial height, but it's being decreased by this term and it's being decreased by that term. So that goes in our equation right here. So we end up with mg times the initial height. So h initial minus v initial times time and minus one half g t squared like that and so that gives us the potential energy now we also need to find time in the air now, time in the air can be found by equating this right here so we have final height is zero initial height is 4.9 this is minus 10 times t and minus 4.9 t squared and that's a quadratic equation that we have to solve uh, to solve for um, for t First, let's make everything positive. So zero, I mean the first term positive, so this is equal to 4.9t squared uh, plus 10t minus 4.9. So t is equal to minus 10 plus or minus the square root of 10 squared minus times minus becomes plus uh, 4 times a times c, which that would be squared, all divided by 2a, which is 9.8. All right. So let's find the time in the air, which we're going to need when we integrate over the time interval. So we have 100 plus 4.9 squared times 4 equals, that's 196. Um, so minus 10. So what's the square root? That's 14. So let's, um, I need some space here. How about here? So we have t equals minus 10 plus or minus 196, take the square root, that gives us 14, all divided by 9.8. So negative, that doesn't work, we need positive time, so 4 divided by 9.8, 4 divided by 9.8 equals 0 0.408 seconds. So time equals 0 0.408 seconds, the time that it takes for the object to go down. So just let's 
let's just simply simplify it to about 0.4 seconds for the time for it to come down to make things a little bit easier to work with. All right, now we're ready to integrate. So, least action, S equals the integral from 0 to 0 0.4. Kinetic energy would be 1 half M times V initial squared plus 2G V initial times T plus G squared T squared times DT minus the integral from 0 to 0 0.4 potential energy mg times h initial minus v initial times time minus 1 half gt squared and that's also times dt so once we do that integral that will be the action for that path and presumably the least action so let's continue s equals uh, we have 1 half times the mass which is 1 kilogram times this will be V initial squared times T plus 2G V initial T squared divided by 2, so the 2's cancel, plus G squared T cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to 0 0.4, minus MG, that would be uh, 1, times 9.8, times H initial times T, minus V initial, times t squared over 2 and minus 1 half g t cubed over 3 like this okay now we just have to evaluate it well I need a 0 to 0 0.4 now we just need to plug in all the values evaluate everything and let's see what we get s equals 1 half times v initial that would be 10 squared that would be 100 times I'm going to plug in the limit 0 0.4 Plug in zeros, we get nothing, so we don't have to worry about the lower limit. Uh, plus 9.8 times 10 times 0 0.4 squared plus 9.8 squared. Uh, let's see here, we have a 1 half in here. Well, we'll worry about that later. Uh, that would be times 0 0.4 cubed minus. And let's put a bracket around that. To get rid of the 1 half, we make this a 50, we make this a 5, and we divide this by 2. There we go. Oh, I forgot the 3. 3 times 2 would be 6. All right. Mm, caught an error. Minus this 9.8 times, here we have the height initial, which is 4.9, times the time, 0 0.4, minus 10 divided by 2, which is 5 times 0 0.4 squared. And here we have minus 1 half, minus 1 sixth G 9.8 times 0 0.4 cubed, all divided by 6. Wow, that's quite a calculation. I think I'm just now going to rely on my calculator to get the rest of these values. So in here, what do we have? We have 0.4 cubed times 9.8 squared divided by 6 equals, okay? Then we add that to this quantity plus uh, 9.8 times 5 times 0.4 squared equals. And then we come over here and then we have um, plus 50 times 0.4, 50 times 0.4 equals. And we have S is equal to a positive 28.86 for this part right here. And then we have over here, uh, well, minus or plus, we'll see what happens. We have uh, 4.9, 4.9 times 0.4 minus 5 times 0.4 squared minus... 9.8 times 0.4 cubed divided by 6 equals, it is a positive value, times 9.8 equals, so minus 10.34 equals, and so that would be 18.52, and the units are joules times seconds, and obviously, that is now a positive quantity because we started with an, an amount of kinetic energy 
and then when we subtract the average potential energy from the kinetic energy we get a positive value but again that will be the smallest number you can get for any path taken from here to here in the same amount of time of 0.4 seconds try any other path and the action will be a larger number for starting from here ending over here and taking the same amount of time so that's what we call the path of least action now we know how to calculate it now in the next video we'll do something slightly different and then we'll calculate some different paths to see if indeed it causes the action to go up or to stay the same or to become smaller we already of course know the answer if it's the path of least action whatever other path we'll take will end up in a larger value when we calculate it and we'll show you some examples of that to come and that is how it's done